the marks on those guitars. You know what they tell the story is that I'm clumsy. Today we are doing a long-term review of the Fender Road Worn series. So long-term for me because I've had this one just about one full year now. Uh, when these things came out back in 2009-ish, uh, they were basically, what was really cool about them is they had uh, a lot of custom shop features to them but for a way lower price than the custom shop guitar. So it's kind of like, it's almost like Woody Road Worn versus custom shop, but I don't have a custom shop to compare it to. Uh, but there are some really cool features that you get, like the, uh, the thin coat nitro finish. Uh, you get the um, worn in feel to it, the vibe to it, especially on the neck where it counts the most, where it feels uh, really, really nice. Um, so there's a, a lot of stuff that was only available through the custom shop. Uh, and then you get some nice little upgrades here for it, like the, uh, the tall frets and the five-way selector switch. Uh, so there's really cool stuff, but it's way cheaper. So I think the, uh, the production line custom shop guitars, uh, which I think it's what I call the, the team bolt, I think it is. Um, because they're not, it's not one guy making them all the way through to custom specs. They're basically just built to a spec or whatever. I think those things started like 3500 bucks, And these things at the time, I want to say they were about 750 And now they're just north of 1000 bucks. I guess it is. Uh, so it's a whole lot of guitar, a whole lot of custom shop features, I should say, for way, way less money. Um... Now, I know that they had, uh, so there was the Avery, the American Vintage Reissue Guitars, and now nowadays there's the, uh, I think it's the Original Series. Uh, the Original Series is twice as expensive, and the Avery's, I think, uh, even started uh, more expensive than these things are now. And uh, But the difference was uh, with the, the Nitro Finish is they have a hard poly undercoat. So this is a thin coat, so there's thin uh, nitro paint and then wood. Whereas the uh, Avery's had the nitro finish but a hard poly finish underneath. And it was thick as well. So uh, that's the reason why I think a lot of the, the American Vintage reissues and the moderns, they don't age the same way uh, because they have that hard poly undercoat. And it kind of sort of defeats the purpose of having the nitro finish if you're going to have a hard undercoat under there. Because um, part of the problem or the, the benefit is that they, they wear in. Um, so one of the things that I noticed when they first came out, and it still holds true, is that they feel a lot like the uh, real honest-to-goodness pre-CBS Stratocasters that I've played. I haven't played tons of them, but the ones that I have played feel a lot like these guitars. They, they're they super light, they, the nitro feels very similar, the necks feel very worn in and similar, so there's there's a lot of stuff that, that for me kind of hits the right marks of if you wanted a vintage guitar but you don't want to spend 11, 12, 13, 15 grand for a parts caster uh, with mostly vintage parts of you know, whatever sort of origin, or all the way to like 30, 40, 50 grand for a original, documented, verified, uh, uh, good condition vintage reissue, or not vintage guitar, not, not a reissue. Uh, so I look at these things as it gets me where I want to be as far as like the looks and the vibe for way, 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 way less money. And uh, they're really, they kind of, they, they remind me a lot of the real pre-CBS guitars that I have played. Uh, now, one of the interesting things is they're not slavishly accurate, so the, this is the 50s version, but it's not a 54, it's not a 55, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine 
it's definitely not a 59. Those had rows or boards. But it's not slavish, so it's, I, th I think of it more as like the, uh, the best of the 50s features. So it's kind of a, it's not a 56, uh, it's not a 57, it's just a best of the, f the 50s. And, and I'm really okay with that. I'm actually plenty happy with that. I really don't mind the things that aren't uh, you know, perfectly accurate to a specific year. In fact, I don't care that it's not uh, accurate to a specific year. Um, and I like the, the little subtle improvements they've done, like the tall frets and the pickup selector switch. Uh, those things are nice. So I like that the uh, everything works on the guitar. So when I've played pre-CBS guitars, I've been afraid if you touch the volume knob, is, it, is that the moment that it's going to stop working? Is it going to be scratchy? Is it going to make uh, noise? Is it going to cut out? Is it just going to stop working altogether? Like it's... Uh, they're they're more delicate than I want them to be. So I like the fact that I can play with this guitar. I can use the knobs. I can change everything I want. I can knock the switch around all I want to do. The uh, the trum bar it it exists. It's actually there. It's the original bar. It fits. The uh, the tip is the original tip. Um, the uh, the bridge saddles they they're not uh, gouged or worn in where they've got burrs and they break strings every time you try and bend a string. Like everything works on it, so you know that's another great little feature to it. Uh, and obviously the uh, the jumbo frets are not jumbo really; they're just tall, and narrow. Which <laughs> So what do you get? So obviously the big feature with these guitars is going to be the nitro finish, the thin coat nitro finish, which you normally only will get through the custom shop starting at $3,000 plus dollars going on up to whatever. Uh, so that's, that's a huge thing over there. Uh, let's see. You get uh, the vintage hardware, but that's, I mean, it's really been done before. You have the American Vintage reissues, you have the Classic Series, you have all these sorts of things. But to me, without the thin coat nitro finish, they, they, they're kind of, they feel incomplete. They feel like they're slightly wrong. Uh, and if it has a shiny poly finish, it feels even weirder um, because they don't, they just don't quite feel right, even though they'll play right and they'll sound right. Um, but it's just, it kind of completes the uh, effect. Like the reason that uh, I want this is I want it to be, to, to have that same mojo as a real pre-CBS uh, Fender Stratocaster. And without the, uh, the, the thin coat nitro finish, it just doesn't quite feel like that. Uh, and then the worn in neck, uh, it actually feels quite comfy. Um, and supposedly it has a similar neck carve to the originals, and I don't remember them feeling quite this. I remember being thinner, being surprisingly thin feeling necks. Um, but this one, so this one is a soft V, so it's not a hard V. If you've ever played the Eric Clapton Strat or the Dave Murray Strat, those are a hard V, and this is not that. So this one is much, much more subtle. If it was a hard V, it'd be a deal breaker because those just feel awful. You know. Every manufacturer has stolen everything from Fender, <laughs> like the body shapes and pickup orientation and, and neck shapes and all these sorts of things. The, the one thing that they never steal is the V-shaped neck. I mean, it's pretty rare that you find that outside of Fender. Uh, but this is, it's a really soft V, so what it feels like, so they're, it's a slightly thicker neck than the 60s version, but because it's a V-shape, uh, even though it's a soft V shape, you don't you don't notice the V so much, but it's taken some of the material, so it doesn't quite feel so feel so uh, thick in your hand. It doesn't fill your hand up quite so much, and uh, uh, so it, it's actually a really really comfortable neck, and especially where they they've worn the finish off the back over there, so it's nice and smooth. Um, now for the '60s necks, so this is an older '60s neck um, when it still had rosewood. I don't know why they can't do rosewood anymore. CITES is, doesn't apply to musical instruments, so it doesn't matter. You can do rosewood. I don't know why they don't. And, or actually, I, guess I do know. So now they can charge you extra for something that used to be basic. Uh, but anyway, so the old rosewood uh, next. Now, what's amazing about these is it's a familiar feel. It's a little thinner feeling, but it's the round C-shaped back. But they've done just an extraordinary job of rounding the frets off. Like, it is so smooth that transition where they rolled the edges and they rolled the frets in there as well. 
it is really smooth. They've just done an immaculate job on that. And this guitar, or this neck here, it's, uh, I don't know, it's maybe about 10 years old. Um, but it's great, so it's, it's, it needs a uh, level crown polish because um, it's got some, uh, some dents going on on the frets over here. But it is really, really smooth. It's just an ultra comfortable neck. And this neck, every guitar I put this neck onto loves it. Like it just matches with any guitar like it was meant to be on that guitar, uh, which is not always the case. Um, but the, uh, the, the craftsmanship I found is really superb. I can't say as much about the craftsmanship on the newer ones, uh, not because it's not there, but because I just can't say it because as soon as this came in, it had uh, some fret sprout going on. And so I bought this when, right after this era was discontinued. I think this is the fourth era? One, two, three. Yeah, I think this is the fourth generation, maybe you want to call that, of these things. So there's the first generation, those ones that were a lot more distressed. They were more heavily distressed. There was, I think it was the second generation was the ones with the, uh, uh, the different finishes. They had the silver and the candy apple red, but they had the humbuckers. I think there was a white one with black pickups, but it was, uh, they, they just got those wrong. It was it was a weird spec and it was wrong and I don't think it went over all that well. Uh, and I think you can actually still find some of those that have not been bought and they discontinued those years ago. Um, and then the third generation was more like this, but with still rusty hardware. And then you get, this would be, I think, the fourth generation. And because we're with the less, um, less distressed, less uh, rusty hardware, the tuners are still relatively shiny. So, and that's much, much uh, a better uh, way of doing it. Um, the rusty hardware was a little too rusty for, I mean, it, yeah, it was just a little awkward. Um, and now they're up to like a fifth generation, so. Anyway, uh, but anyway, so this had been sitting around in a warehouse for quite a while, and it had some fret sprout on it. So when it came in, uh, I let it, the fret sprout go for a while because it was barely there. It was just enough that it was annoying. Um, but I let it go for quite a while, and uh, then I had to fix it, and I got it all cleaned up and rounded off, and it was really nice. So I can't say how much of that was me versus how much of that was Fender. Um, because it came in already for, with fret, fret sprout, so I can't say how smooth it really was uh, when it was new. Now, I will say this, that after a year, it's already got some fret sprout again. Now, a lot of that is due to the fact that I live in the American Southwest, and it is super hot and super dry, and fret sprout is kind of a way of life out here, or down here, whatever you want to say. Um, so it's not something that I can really blame Fender for. I think pretty much any manufacturer, when a guitar gets shipped out here, uh, is going to have uh, fret sprout. Um, although, I mean, Fender is down here in the American Southwest as well, so I don't know uh, what the difference is there. Although these, I guess, were out of Mexico, and I don't know if the maybe they're closer to the sea and they get more uh, humidity down there or something. I don't know. Uh, but so. The point is, I, I don't really blame Fender for that because I think it's really just a common thing um, for just because of where I live that I'm going to get fresh sprout. But uh, it is something that is easily fixed, um, and so I don't uh, complain too much about that. Um, now, there is some weird uh, pattern on the fretboard. So if you get the 60s model, comes with, it will be Pau Ferro now, so it'll be a slightly orange or brown instead of the rosewood that they were using. Um, but they don't wear the fretboard on these things, and why would they? Uh, they'll just get dirty over time. Uh, but what they've done for these is they've gone through and Unlike the custom shop, they haven't meticulously gone through and aged the neck where all the little markings where the finish will flake off or rub off, um, especially in the country court area and the neck around here on the 12th fret. What they've done is just a more general wear to it where I think they just kind of rub it up against a uh, buffing wheel, one of the big giant buffing wheels that spins around. And 
uh, what happens is, so they've taken some of the finish off, which is fine. I mean, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm okay that they have worn in the neck, but what happens is it looks a little weird because it is a lighter patch than the uh, kind of aged uh, finish they put on the neck. And what you would expect it to be is a darker patch where you know the finish has rubbed off and then it has gotten dirty over time and gotten darker and I, so it looks a little weird while the guitar is young but i think the idea is that where they have worn the finish off is it will color in over time so if i'm you know playing playing the guitar the more i play the guitar the more the, the dirt will kind of work its way into the fingerboard just like it would on an, on a, uh, a vintage one if I was alive in uh, the 50s. Uh, it would kind of wear in. So I think this thing will age over time and that's kind of what they have been going for. Um, but in the meantime, it does look a little bit weird to have lighter spots instead of darker spots. But I think that was on purpose. Uh, and actually, I am happy that they didn't rub dirt through the neck for obvious reasons in this day and age. Um, now the fret work itself, other than the fret ends, is actually pretty good. So there were no high spots, there were no low spots, there were no dead spots. So the, there's a vintage spec to the neck, and that is the carve on the fingerboard is uh, seven and a quarter inches, just like it was in the 50s and uh, 60s. Uh, and what the problem with that was, was that if you did a lot of string bending, uh, the, the notes would uh, fret out. They would you they come up the hill on this rounded fretboard and you just have notes die out on you so but with the tall frets and even with the medium jumbo frets they used to use uh, that really doesn't happen so the frets are actually really easy to use with the tall narrow frets they really have solved that problem so it's just another great little feature where you get the nice comfort of having the rounded fretboard uh, but without the, uh, the downside of having uh, the notes fret out. Uh, how does it sound? So the sound will be kind of up to the user. Now when I bought this guitar, I fully intended uh, to swap out the pickups when I got around to it or I got sick of the pickups that were in, in, in here. I don't know what I intended to swap them out for. I've put uh, Texas Specials in a lot of my guitars, so I'm really used to how those sound. Uh, but I might have gone for something maybe more vintage-y. I don't even know. But it really doesn't matter because once I got the guitar in and I got used to the Tex-Mex pickups, I really like the Tex-Mex pickups. I was really surprised. I, I thought I had a set of Tex-Mex pickups before, and wasn't that wild about them and thought they sounded kind of cheap but apparently I did not because these do not sound like that they don't sound like I think of a vintage guitar sounding though and that is uh, why, where it's more or less up to you so what I like about the Tex-Mex pickups is that they sound really good in a modern sense so if I'm playing this in a band they would really fit in well with the band so I think they have this kind of a mid-range sort of punch to them that really works well with uh, an overdriven amp or even a distorted amp um, and it's it's I, I really like the way it's the, well, the way they sound and they even sound good clean uh, so I'm not complaining at all about the pickups in fact I like them so much that I don't have any plans to change the pickups even a little bit what you're getting for this guitar is you're getting a heck of a lot of custom shop features on this guitar so the only other, uh, the only mod that I've done to this guitar in the year that I've had it, and it took me about a month really to like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do that, is I ran the, uh, the bridge pickup here through the tone knob down here. Uh, and I moved the middle, uh, the middle and, and, and neck pickup share this tone knob and then the bridge is alone down over here. <laughs>
Okay, so these were basically uh, a custom shop inspired series. So they, they're making these sorts of things in the custom shop. They decided to uh, streamline the process where you make everything more you know, uniform uh, to cut down costs and allow it to be, uh, allow you to get custom shop features really in a uh, production line guitar. So what are you really missing versus the custom shop guitars? This is kind of the affordable custom shop. So what do you, well here's what you actually get so similar to a custom shop guitar, as you're getting an alder body, this is actually a three-piece alder body instead of a two-piece or whatever. But Eric Clarkson's Blackie was a three-piece body. I mean, you really can't complain uh, too much about that. But anyway, so it's an alder body. You get the thin coat nitro finish, which is only otherwise available through the custom shop. Uh, there's the, it's a, the route underneath here is the regular vintage route but you get a little bit more depth, I think, in the uh, pickup cavities. Uh, the, the true vintage, they're, they're a little shallow because they were just designed for the regular pickups. The extra depth allows you to put in uh, humbuckers if you want. So if you wanted to put in single coil size humbuckers, they need a little bit extra depth to them because they're taller than normal pickups. And I think that those will work out fine. At least I, I've done that before. But you also get uh, the, the worn in finish. Uh, you also get quality electronics. So these are not American made parts, but they are uh, very good versions of everything. So they, this is a very, uh, it's, it's a good switch. It's a quality bridge with the full size uh, trim block. You get the nice upgrades versus uh, just a pure vintage um, spec. So you get the taller frets and you get the five position switch. Now, the things that you don't get versus custom shops, so where did they uh, save all the money? Well, obviously the first one is that they're made. these are made in Mexico and labor is just cheaper down there. So that's right off the bat part of it. Uh, second part of it, I sort of hinted at it, but the, uh, the, the quality of the wood. If you go to the custom shop, the wood would have a prettier grain to it. So it would have a nice grain, even though they're going to paint over it if they were, if you wanted the black one or if it was going to be a black one or whatever, or green or whatever. They would still use a better grain than these. I suspect that as the finish wears off that there will be, the grain will be a little more sparse than this one. It probably won't be bad. I mean, what do I even care at that point? But... Um, but you get the prettier wood, and especially it comes to with the neck. Now the neck on this one has very nice grain. The problem with the grain uh, is that it's pretty faint. It's not very, uh, uh, it doesn't show up all that well. Um, but it has nice grain to it. It's a nice piece of lumber here. It's one piece neck. It, when you go to the custom shop, you're going to get a better piece of wood. And maybe you'll even get uh, you know, some nice little extras like bird's eyes or flame. So that's one of the little things, and whether or not you care, uh, I don't think you'd really care, because I think this thing looks, absolutely looks the part with the woods that they've chosen, so I don't see any issues with that. Um, you'd also, versus the custom shop, you're giving up some historical accuracy. So rem remember I mentioned that this is a best of the 50s sort of spec versus a uh, specific year or period or whatever it is. Uh, and so if you go to the custom shop, they're not going to have a 50s version. It'll be a 56 or 55 or 57 or whatever it winds up being. And it will be fairly slavishly accurate to that spec, even when it doesn't really need to be. Like one of the things that they will do, uh, I know the master builds are doing it. I don't know if they do it on the production, uh, the team built ones, but they'll even have their name on a little piece of uh, masking tape inside the cavity right here uh, because that's how they did it in the 50s. The, whoever built it would put their little name on a piece of tape in there and it would sometimes it would still be there decades later. Uh, so they would do that sort of thing. They would uh, The locator holes or the pin holes or whatever you want to call it when they put these on the router table to route out all the angles or the, the, the the outline basically of the guitar they'll have all those things in there i think there's one that's around here and there's one over here and i don't remember where the other one is um, but those will be there even though they don't use those machines anymore 
and uh, they'll have the same thing on the neck where there will be, I think there's some in the hole here, but if you take off, I think it's the D tuner, there should be an extra hole underneath there. And if you go to the custom shop, they're going to have those holes, even though we don't, or we, I don't work for Fender, uh, they don't use those same machines anymore. They'll still have the same uh, locator holes, like just weird stuff like that. And all the little uh, markings will be in there where they will handwrite in the, uh, the date on the neck heel. And you'll have the, there's usually a body date in here in the uh, uh, tremolo cavity. Like all those sorts of things will be there. So, so that's some of the stuff that you'll be missing is, is the, the weird extra stuff that really doesn't matter all that much. Um, but the big thing you're, you're missing versus the custom shop is the, uh, the attention to detail, the detail work. And in this sense, the, that's going to be stuff like, uh, remember I talked about they probably just did these uh, wear patterns on a buffing wheel, you know, where they just the wheel is spinning right here and they just kind of bump it up against there and rub some of the finish off. Uh, in the custom shop, they're going to go through and hand carve all those little wear marks with whatever tool they use. So there's a, there's a lot of that. Uh, and then a big thing that will come in will be the, uh, the fret work. Now the upside to that is that you really can just dress the fret yourself. You can go through and take care of your fret ends if you have any issues with your fret ends, and you might not, depending on your climate. And uh, basically make it play like a custom shop guitar, because it's really the important part is going to be the pickups, picking whatever it is that you think pickups should look like or sound like, and then it'll be the, uh, the frets, so the way the neck feels for you. That'll be where you want it to be as smooth as you can get it. After that, you'll have very much uh, all the custom shop features, minus the fancy pretty woods, for just way, way less money. If we go into prices, I don't know why, but I, I often go into prices on these videos. So when I bought this, it was right after they were discontinued, and I really wanted one. Um, and they hadn't really announced that the next generation was coming out yet. So uh, what I did is I contacted one of uh, the vendors that I've used before, the, the guitar stores, and I asked for a deal. And they wound up giving me a way better deal than I had anticipated. I want to say that the street price on these was nine fifty before they were discontinued or whatever. And then I asked for a deal. So with taxes and shipping, I think it was about 730. It was well under 750. I know that much. I really didn't think I would like the guitar as much as it was, as much as I do. But I save so much money, especially over getting a custom shop guitar since I can do the fret work myself. I bought another one. Now, I know that a lot of you are really against relic guitars, and I understand, but nobody's forcing you to buy a relic guitar. You can play what you want, honest. I don't care. But your arguments are really dumb. So the argument you should just buy a new guitar and play the heck out of it. This guitar is a early 2000s, maybe 2002 or three-ish. Let's talk about play the heck out of it. This guitar went with me to so many places. Bars, coffee shops, band practice rehearsals, jam sessions, parties, all sorts of you know places. Uh, and the original neck, uh, I wore that one out, put a replacement neck on it, and I wore that one out, and then I put another replacement on it, and I mostly wore that one out. And now we're on to, what would that be, the fourth neck? This is a uh, warmeth replacement neck with a jumbo stainless steel frets, and it's probably the last neck that this guitar will ever need. I've worn out two and a half necks 
playing this guitar. Is that enough playing for you? Is that enough play the heck out of it for you? And look at the finish. Now this is polyester and it's 20 years old. Notice that it's, I can get reflections in through here, right? Notice how shiny it is. Do you see any dings? There are a couple dings in there, but they're, they almost don't even show up on camera. In fact, they probably don't. Like there's one right here. Like, oh look, how, look how awful that is. Oh, look how awful the back is. Oh my gosh, look how terrible. Oh, it's just full of just belt rash and all these things. Yeah, there's nothing. I've worn out two and a half necks on this guitar. That's playing an awful lot. That's playing the heck out of it. It's not even dull. The finish isn't even dull on it. And if you say, well, you know, if you were playing it, there would be more dents or dings into it. It's like, are you really in the habit of walking into walls while you're playing guitar? Because honestly, when you're playing guitar, you're playing the guitar. You're, it doesn't get dents and dings while you're playing it. The dents and dings happen usually when you're not playing it, when it's sitting around somewhere and it falls over. Uh, the, the reason is that this is what Polly does. This is why... Uh, playing the heck out of it is not a thing when we're talking about poly, polyester or polyurethane. Because this is what poly does. Poly is, it's better at being paint than nitro is. It's, it protects. So the reason that Fender switched from nitro to polyurethane is so that the guitars would last longer in guitar stores. So the guitar is hanging in a guitar store, kids come along and play it. If this was nitro, this is going to get dinged up and dented and scratched up immediately. And the, the more dings and dents and scratches and things you get, the less the uh, guitar store can charge for the guitar. So nitro, on the other hand, it's kind of a, it's got this weird combination where it's, uh, it's hard, but it's also, or it's soft, but it's also brittle. So you bang it into things, and it's going to leave a mark. You wear jewelry, and it'll leave a mark. Uh, the longer you play it with uh, long sleeve shirts, is it will wear the uh, finish off faster than with the bare arms. So it's just, it's way worse at being paint. But what it does do is, as it wears off, as it dents and dings, it starts to look really cool. There's something very pleasing about the way that nitro wears versus poly. So when you get uh, poly guitars, like this is polyester now, uh, this is my other main guitar. This one's probably some more work than the uh, last one there. Um, what happens with the poly guitars is poly is both hard but it has give to it so it's so, sort of flexible so it doesn't crack when the temperature changes uh, when you bump into things it has a little give so it doesn't chip away as easily and it doesn't uh, mark up and even if you do mark it up you can polish those out a lot of the time uh, it's just better at being paint and, uh, and that's basically why you can't say that just play the heck out of a guitar and it'll mark up because it just won't certainly not in the way that nitro will the thin coat nitro even if it chips off it chips off but it's so smooth that it's not noticeable whereas poly as it chips off it's a little thicker it's a little more 3d to it but i think it really does mark them up make sense to mark them up because they're going to get marked up anyway if they're hanging in a shop and people are touching them and if they're pre-marked up, then you really can't complain if there's no little ding, dent or ding or something over here. It really doesn't matter all that much. But that kind of brings up the next part of it is you didn't earn those marks. You didn't earn those dents and dings. And that's also dumb. That's just dumb. That's a dumb argument. So think of Eric Clapton's Blackie. He bought that in the 70s. That's a 56 or something Strat. He bought it in the 70s. In fact, it's a parts caster, so I don't even know what date it would, all the parts would be on it. 
it was already marked up and dented up and dinged up and the, the neck was already uh, chewed up looking like it was or like you're familiar to it looking like that. Did he earn those? He didn't do most of that. That already The guitar already came like that. He didn't earn any, any of that. Do you see him crying at heroin? No. He liked the look of the guitar. Actually, what he assumed was that the guitar that was worn out was really good and had been played a lot more because it was good, and that's why it was worn out. But he liked. He went based on the look. It looked worn out, and that's what he based it on. I mean, he didn't earn those marks and dents and dings and the wear on the fingerboard. What a poser. God. What if he had a guitar with a bunch of skulls on it? Like, oh, they're so popular today to have skulls on everything or on your strap or on your shirt or whatever it is. You have all those skulls on there. Did you earn those? Did you kill anyone? You did not, you poser. What about uh, blood splatter? You see blood splatter on various guitars of whatever type. Did you earn that? Did somebody really stab you up on stage but you decide to finish the show anyway? No. It's just a graphic. It's just a paint job. You didn't earn all those, you posers. <laughs> so the road-worn guitars is just an aesthetic. It's just a vibe. Like, why do you even have an opinion on it? Why do you have an opinion on that? You don't have an opinion on people with skulls and stupid shit like that. Poser. Uh, but even take this guitar. So this was the, uh, really my, my other main guitar. This is really my main guitar. Uh, for a lot of years. So this was a 1997 Floyd Rose Classic Strat. And uh, again, I wore the original neck out. This is a uh, Warmoth replacement neck with jumbo stainless steel frets. And it is awesome. Awesome. <laughs> it's really it's custom made to exactly my specs. So it wasn't, you know, off the shelf or whatever. It's custom made and therefore expensive. Uh, but you see the uh, the wear on here. Uh, everything on this guitar is uh, the the marks on it, the wear on it is natural. It's real. Uh, the only modification is the uh, seam where I can pick up here. Um, but did I earn this? Hmm. Well, it happened while I was using it. it. Happened while I was playing it. You know how it happened? The chair I was sitting in when I was learning songs had a little sharp edges on there. It's not this chair. It had those sharp edges on it that was scraping the finish off. And I didn't even know it was happening for a while. Um, I did nothing to... Once I found out about it, I swapped the chair out. But did I earn that? Is that really even something that earned? But it's there. Like The notion of earning things or that it's not honorable how you got those scratches is just ludicrous. It's stupid. Grow up. Put away the comic books. This is real life. There is no honor to the finish of your guitar. If you want to have skulls in your guitar, have skulls. I don't care. Blood splatter, have blood splatter. I mean, if you want a target paint job on your guitar, great. No one's going to shoot at you. I'm not saying you're a poser because no one's shooting at you even though you have a target on your guitar. I don't care. Why you care is weird. It's just the way a guitar looks. And then... The other argument is, well, all the marks on the guitar tell a story. Tell the story of the guitar. Ooh. Does Eric Clapton know the story of his guitar? He knows the story after he bought it, but he doesn't know where all the marks came from that were already there that made it look cool and made him want it. He didn't know any of those stories, especially since it was hanging in a guitar shop with a bunch of other guitars. You know, nobody at the guitar shop was telling, oh, the story is from this. You know where these little marks come from? The story of the guitar, the story of those marks is insane. It's unbelievable. The guitar was sitting like this, and then it fell over. The guitar was leaning up against an amp, and it fell over. The guitar was in its stand, and the dog walked by and knocked it over. Those stories are amazing. The stories are amazing. You know, let's see which one. This one. You know this one? The story of this one? I bumped it on something. I know what you're saying. That I should sell these stories to Hollywood and become a bajillionaire. 
That is the story of the March on Guitars. They, they don't have, typically they don't have great stories. What happened? The guitar fell over. What happens when uh, you get a Les Paul and invariably the <laughs> headstock is broken off because Les Pauls have a bizarre design to them? The guitar was in its stand and it fell over. Somebody knocked the guitar over. Versions of that same story. It was leaned up against an amp. Somebody knocked it over. Never is the story that I was up on stage and this, you know, amazing super hot chick came over and she was hugging on me and something else happened and I had to dodge a bullet and I stopped a robbery with the headstock. There's no stories like that. The story is the guitar fell over. This notion that there's some sort of honor <laughs> to to the the marks on your guitar or that there's there's story to it or that there's uh, you earned something. Like what a crock, grow up. Don't be such an idiot. You you have to earn the marks on your guitar. The the marks have honor. <laughs> the 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 marks on your guitar tell a story. What a crock of bull <laughs> The marks on this guitar, the you know they tell the story is that I'm clumsy. What is the story of the guitar? What is the honor? <laughs> there is no honor, there is no dishonor. Paint your guitar how you want to paint it. I don't care. <laughs> Grow up. Yeah. <laughs>